Welcome class to how to complete the $100,000 stock market challenge project. The project consists of 40% of your second marking period grade. If you're a second semester senior, that would be 40% of your fourth marking period grade. It is in two parts, a 15-page stapled packet and a 15-minute presentation. They are two separate elements, although the presentation makes up 30% of the overall stock project grade. As far as for the actual packet that you hand in, it includes the initial investment statement, which needs to be retyped or re-handwritten in a neat fashion, your tracking logs. Now those tracking logs, there will be 9 to 12 of them, depending on how many weeks our competition lasted. There will be one tracking graph, which tracks each week how your stocks performed. There are various websites that can show you how to do a graph, or you can go to Microsoft Excel, which enables you to plug in data to complete the graph. There's also something called the final report that includes a gain-loss statement, which I will show you separately in a different video session. And there's a type business letter which summarizes how your stock account did. The business letter needs to be done in proper business letter format with good grammar, effective spelling, and solid writing mechanics. The presentation, which as I said before is 30% of your grade, needs to have visual aids. That could be in the form of a PowerPoint, uh, old-fashioned poster presentation, or using overhead transparencies. You need to use proper stock lingo and vocab. You need to wear business attire, both men and women. You need to project your voice and have vocal tone, make eye contact. You need to provide the reasons and history behind each company and why you bought them. And as always, you need to have accurate information. If you have any additional questions, you may see me at Extra Help or watch this recording again. Thank you. Welcome class to how to complete the initial investment statement. This form is used when students originally purchase their stocks. Students are going to be purchasing five stocks with $100,000, which would give them roughly $20,000 for each company that they're investing in. For the purchase date column, obviously we put down the date that the students are purchasing the stocks in the computer lab. For the stock name, we would put simply the name of the stock. For the stock symbol, each stock has a symbol usually anywhere from one to four letters. And let's, for instance, talk about the stock of Apple Computer. Apple Computer stock has a stock symbol of AAPL, and we would find that at Google Finance or perhaps Yahoo Finance or AOL Finance, et cetera. It says there that it's on the NASDAQ, it's publicly traded, and the symbol is AAPL. The 140.31 is the share price, and we also have there the market cap, the 52-week high-low, as well as the P-E ratio. Students need to also calculate how many shares of each stock they can purchase. The way they would do that is take $20,000, which is going to be their investment capital, and divide it by the share price, in this case 140.31, and that would give them the number of shares they can buy. Students may also want to round that number down so that they don't spend more than $100,000 when it's all said and done. So they're going to actually take that number and round down, and that way they will have in the case of this example, instead of having 434 shares, they would round down to 430. At the very end of filling out this statement, they're going to have some cash reserves left over. That would be the total cost column added up, subtracted from 100,000, would give them their leftover money. If you have any additional questions, please see me after class, or you may watch this recording again. Welcome class. This video section is on how to do the tracking log. You will be doing a tracking log every weekend, either Friday after 4.30, Saturday or Sunday when the market is closed. You'll be doing one tracking log for every week that the stock market project is in session for, probably anywhere from 9 to 12 tracking logs. You will bring this tracking log to class every Monday and we will update our market scoreboard in the class. Let's begin. The name of the stock is Nike, for example. You would put your stock symbol here, NKE. Then you would put down the date that you checked it. For example, 
We might be checking it on October 14th, 2006. You would then go on the computer and look what the closing price on that Friday was. For instance, Nike closed on that day at $87 and 57 cents. The net change since the purchase date. Well, we would subtract that closing price from the buy sell price. We purchased Nike originally at 86.21 when we first bought the stocks. I know that 87.57 minus 86.21 is a positive one dollar and 36 cents. News and evidence. We would go on the website and look at the headlines for Nike. We would find perhaps that Nike signed a new deal with Tiger Woods. Uh, perhaps they're extending their contract with Tiger Woods. The number of shares, well that comes from our original investment, from our initial investment statement, as did the buy-sell price. We originally bought 230 shares of Nike. To figure out the total value of stock, I'm going to multiply the closing price, 87.57, by the number of shares, which is 230 shares. And that gives me a total of $20,141. I'm going to do that for each of my stocks. This is why our portfolios go up and down. Every week this total value of stock column is going to fluctuate depending on whether the closing price was up or down. So I'm going to do this for each of my five stocks. Nike, General Electric, Dell Computer, Google, and McDonald's. I'm then going to add up this total value of stock column to my cash reserves. And when I originally bought my stocks, I had some leftover money. That's called cash reserves. Let's say, for instance, I had $397 left over. I'm going to add that to my total value of stock column. And then I'm going to come up with a total portfolio value, which obviously be in the neighborhood of $100,000. And this week, mine finished at $100,786 after adding up my five stocks. If you have any additional questions, please watch this recording again. Welcome. Welcome, class, to How to Create an Online Graph. Today I'm with Luis Torinos, and he's going to show you on Microsoft Excel how to build a graph of your total portfolio value for each of the weeks of the stock challenge. Another method is to use the NCES Kids website. You can see the URL here. It's also located in your stock packet. Next, Luis is going to take you through Microsoft Excel to build a graph. All right, so you want to open up Microsoft Excel, and then you will see a bunch of these little boxes. Uh, what you want to do is, on the first box, you can put um, the, the week the date of the week that is so for example week one and then below it you could put week two and so on and so forth uh, how many weeks you have so week six seven eight nine ten eleven and week twelve then right next to it you want to put the total amount of money you earned that week so for example week one you had ninety nine thousand eight hundred sixty two dollars then the next week you went 96, 5, 3, 2, and so on and so forth. Then you do that for all all the 12 weeks. Then what you end up having is, is a graph looking like this. And what you want to do is you want to highlight here. And you go to insert, chart, area, and you go click next, and next, next and then you finish and then you end up with a graph like this and uh, you could even label it but just and uh, that's about it and welcome class to how to complete the final report and gain loss statement this consists of 20 percent of your stock market project grade what you're going to do is you're going to put in each of your five stocks for example maybe you own Nike stock you're going to sell the stock, 
hypothetically on December 1st, 2006. And you're then going to put in the price that you sold it for, or what it closed at on that day. For argument's sake, maybe Nike closed at $92.25. Let's say hypothetically you had purchased originally 250 shares of Nike. We would then calculate the total revenue. We would multiply the number of shares, which is 250, by the liquidation price for the day that we sold it, 92.25, and we would realize that our gain or our total revenue, should I say, was $23,000.62 and 50 cents. And I would type that in the box marked total revenue. News and evidence, we would simply put the most significant news event that occurred during the tournament. Maybe Nike buys rival Under Armour, which would obviously be a, a very significant event. And we would do this for all five of our stocks. We would then go down to the gain loss statement and complete this for each of our stocks. Name of stock Nike, total revenue we would just get from the computation we did up there. Now that's your revenue from selling it minus what you originally invested in it, which is your total cost. I know that I invested $20,000 originally in Nike, so that gives me a gain of exactly $3,062. I'm going to do this for all five of my stocks, and then at the end I will have a total. Some of my stocks may have a positive, some of them may have a negative gain. In the end, for my portfolio, I was up $4,765. It's very important that I add my cash reserves to this total, as that is my part of my wealth. The transaction costs are for those students who did actually buy and sell stocks during the tournament. If you're confused by any of this, please see me at Extra Help or watch this recording again. Welcome class to how to complete the type business letter. This is 20% of the stock market project grade. The business letter summarizes how your portfolio performed during the stock tournament. It should include news and evidence that affected individual stocks in your account, as well as any major world events that may have affected how the overall stock market performed. The letter should be written in business letter format with proper writing mechanics, effective grammar, um, no typos or spelling mistakes, etc. And it should be written to the lawyer who is handling the will of Uncle Vladimir the Ninth, as the project stipulated. And the lawyer is Mr. Darren Gurney, Attorney at Law, 265 Clove Road, New Rochelle, New York, 10801. As far as proper business letter format, students can go online or Microsoft Word shows some sample business letters. For example, the University of Wisconsin at Madison shows a block business letter format where the return address, the date, and the person who the letter is being written to with their title, etc., is all listed in a block format, single space, and obviously a closing with sincerely. Other websites demonstrate some other elements that might be included. In all cases, however, students need to use proper grammar, effective argumentation with evidence from news and events that occurred that impacted stock prices, and should proofread and edit their work so there are no grammatical mistakes. If you have any other questions regarding this, you can watch this recording again or come see me for extra help. Welcome class to part one of how to do the stock presentation. The stock presentation is 30% of the overall stock project grade. It consists of accuracy of information, which is 20% of your presentation grade. Visual aids, which can be done in the form of a PowerPoint presentation, an old-fashioned poster presentation or a board, three-fold board. Or you can use overhead transparencies, which you can get from Kinko's or Staples with any information or graphs you'd like on them. Stock vocab and lingo, which comes from the Gurney 20 stock terms such as relative strength, sympathy, trading, bullish, and bearish. You're going to want to give the history behind each of your companies and the reasons why you purchased them. It's also imperative that you wear proper business attire. 
meaning suits and ties for the gentlemen and formal business attire for the ladies. I recommend gray, black, or brown outfits that are dark in color. It's also crucial that students have proper eye contact and vocal tone, which consists of 10% of the grade, and use enthusiasm when they're presenting their project. Some other elements that students should consider are the following. If you are using PowerPoint to complete the presentation, make sure you test your floppy disk, memory card, or CD in the class computer at least one day before. Over the years, there have been some students whose disks did not work and they felt helpless presenting without their technology. However, it should be stressed that you do not need to do a PowerPoint. Students are welcome uh, to do a poster or overhead transparencies if they don't want to deal with any of the technology issues that can occur. Uh, please watch this video again if you have any additional questions or watch part two of how to do the stock presentation. Welcome class to part two of how to do the stock presentation. A couple of reminders. Students should make a copy of their stock packet, the 15 page packet that they're going to hand in, so that they can keep it as a reference guide to prepare for the presentation. Um, also, make sure that you understand that the stock packet and the stock presentation are two separate things. The stock packet consists of 70% of the grade, while the stock presentation makes up 30% of students' grade for this project. Students often choose to do PowerPoint presentations. Some PowerPoint presentations that have been effective review the history behind the companies that the students bought, the reasons why they purchased the stocks, and also give some important data such as market cap, 52 week price range, and a little graph so the audience can see how the stock has performed during the 12 weeks that the presentation should cover in discussing the stocks. Other uh, presentations have often shown the overall portfolio value in a nice graph, um, cool logos of each of the various companies that the student has invested in, and sometimes uh, some other pictures. Understand when doing a PowerPoint presentation, students need to make good eye contact and not turn their back on the audience and read from the screen. Some students do a more effective job using a poster or trifold cardboard presentation um, visual aid. You can also go to Staples or Kinko's and get overhead transparencies made with any information you'd like to put on them. If you have any additional questions, please see me at Extra Help.